Personal finance practice problem using Excel. Yield curve creation. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you don't have access to it, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank sheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, answer key. Let's look at it now. So we're going to get the information this time from the treasury.gov website. There's a link to it up here. You could, of course, do the good old Google search for it as well. We're going to pull in the data that we will then use to construct a yield curve chart as we see down below it might look a little bit different because we're going to construct the chart using today's data which is uh, 7 14 22 and obviously you can construct this data for whatever date range you so choose that is available to you so the second tab is going to have some pre-formatted cells here so you can put the data hopefully in there a little bit more easily if you would like to and then construct the chart thusly the third tab we're just going to construct the data in essence from a blank sheet so you can try clicking the link if you have access to this worksheet or you can search for the treasury.gov website and we're looking for then the daily treasury uh, par yield curve rates. That's where we want to be. So we've got the information down below. Once again, select type of interest rate data. We've got the daily treasury par yield uh, curve rates and I'm looking 2022. We've got the information up top. The headers say that we've got the dates. We've got the one month two month, three month, six month, one year, two year, three year, five year, seven year, 10 year, 20 year, and the 30 year. And then we've got uh, the uh, rates on down below. I'm gonna go all the way down to find the latest, the latest information to be using to plot our curve. And so I'm gonna go all the way down here. And for me, that is 714. Could be different for you if you're watching at some point in the future. You're probably not watching at some point in the past. You're probably watching at some point in the future unless you got like a time machine or something, which is cool if you have one. Let me borrow it. But in any case, I'm gonna, hire, I'm gonna copy this last one. We're gonna copy that. And I'm gonna go on over to my worksheet here. And we're just gonna throw it down. Let's, put, let's give it a little space and put it right there i'll just paste it paste it on down right there and there we have it now sometimes i'm going to make this cell a little bit wider we'll see the we'll see the format there if you want to format everything like uniform then you might want to now select the whole worksheet or you could have pasted it if you had already formatted the worksheet right click and paste it this way match the destination formatting right i could paste it here and match the destination formatting and then change this item here to be a date by hitting the item up top and say a long date or a short date for example or you could paste this information and then set your formatting i usually go to the top bar up top right click and format the cells format the cells and i go to the number group i go to currency usually the brackets no dollar sign no decimals and enter I often like to see it as emboldened like so that of course will then throw off uh, the date number here so I'm going to I'm going to delete these and also note that now it's at 13 versus the 11 and so you might want to bring this back down say to 11 to match everything else and then I'll select this item and then go to the drop down and make this the long date well, not long date let's just make it a short date and so there we have it i'll delete this cell right here and delete that so there we have it so now we want the headers so we might be able to copy the headers too instead of retyping them in so if i go back up top probably should have done this first i'm going to go back up top and say let's pull in the headers and see if i could just just copy that in i'm going to control c and bring that on over here i'm going to leave a little bit of room so i'm going to well let's paste it right here i'm going to right click and paste it this time i'm going to paste it with the match destination formatting so there we have it so now we've got our date and so our data this one i need to see a couple decimals with it so i'm going to select this data again we're going to go up top number group let's add a couple decimals like so now I have to kind of break these uh, down to fractions of a year. So these ones that are one month, two months, three months, six months, I need to break those out into fractions of a year. So I'm gonna put in another 
another row up above this one so I can do that in order to insert the chart. So I'll put my cursor on column or row four. I'm gonna right click on that row and insert, which will insert above the row because I selected the whole row. Insert, so there we have it. And so now I'm just gonna say this is gonna be equal to uh, 12, 12 months in a year divided by one. And that's gonna be if I add some decimal, hold on a second. I'm gonna say this is gonna be equal to one divided by 12, I should say, and then add a couple decimals here. And then this one is gonna be equal to two months divided by 12 months in a year. We'll add a couple decimals. Let's add the decimals all the way across. I'm gonna put my cursor here. Let's just add them to the next two months and then we'll be in the one year here. So then this is gonna be equal to three over 12. This is equal to six months divided by 12 months. And now we're in one year. So I could just now retype in one year, two year, three year, five year, seven year, 10 year, 20 year, and 30 year. So there is our data. Let's go ahead and select the items up top. I like to make this kind of look like a header. So I'm gonna to go to the home tab. We're gonna to go to the font group and say, let's make this a bucket black and white. So that looks good. And let's center this stuff. Let's center that stuff by going to the home tab, uh, alignment and center it. And then this is our data. Let's make this data the blue data. So I'm gonna go up top and say, let's make this our blue color. If you don't have that, I go to the more colors down below standard we're going to go to that blue right there and okay home tab font group and let's put some borders around it as well so there we have that so now we can use this data to make to make our chart so we can select this data i'm going to select this data here and i'm saying i want to graph this thing so let's just go to the insert tab to do that i want to assign my x and y axes so i want to use this one down here the charts and I usually use this one which is the scatter with smooth lines and markers so I'm gonna say okay and so oh, hold on a second I did something funny to it undo undo so there it looks right put my cursor back on it and then move it I'm just gonna move it down here without doing anything funny to it okay so now let's make it a bit wider if we could get a little bit more data on it Okay, so now we might want to change it up a little bit so that we can so that we can possibly expand the chart out a little. So first of all, let's put our let's put our axes on this on this side and on this side. So these are going to be the rates or the yields. So let's go to hit the little plus button here. And I'm going to say I want the axis titles. And then I'm going to say this is going to be the yield. I'm going to click on it. And then I'll just type in, I'll just type in uh, the yield. So I'll click on it and type in yield. And notice it types up here. You can't really see it, so it can be a little confusing. But it's typing yield and tab. So there it is. And then this is going to be the, the date, the dates. So let's say dates here probably better call it time or years let's call it years let's say years okay so the next thing I'm gonna just I'm gonna take the title out for now just so we can see a little bit more data and then we can we can then I like to oftentimes double click on this uh, and just check the select data up top just to see the data that it's picking up making sure we've got the right data series so here's the data series I'll edit it and just say, okay, my X information is coming from up top. So that's gonna be the, the years. So that looks right. That's going down here. And then we've got my Y, which is this information, the yield information that looks correct. So I'm gonna say, okay, okay. And then we might want to change, say the range here. So maybe I don't want it going down to zero so I can make this chart look a little bit bigger, possibly starting it at the 1.5. So maybe I, I select this data set, double click on it. It gets us the data on the left hand side. I clicked on it again here and then we got the data. So I want these bars and I want to look at the axis titles 
And so the minimum here, instead of taking it down to zero, let's start it at the 1.5. So 1.5, 1 1.5, 1 and then you got to tab off of it so it'll calculate it. So there we have it. So we see a little bit, a little bit more of the data. Now this one, this spans is of course, uh, kind of spread out because we started off here at fractions of a year and then we jumped up to like 30 years, right? So we could, we could, you know, mess with this portion of the graph a lot to try to zoom in on that data if that's what we're uh, really looking into. So we could adjust this data set then, these items. And I'm gonna go to this one here and look at the axis markers. Now we could say it's not gonna go above 30, so I don't need the 35. So I can get rid of that for sure. Get rid of the 35. And so now we've got it uh, going up, not the three, the 30. So there, so now we've got it going out to 30. And then we could say that uh, we wanna adjust the intervals so we could say instead of going from you know 510 we could say the intervals will be lower than that and here's where you can really play with it right because again you could you might want to cut off some of this data at the end and focus in on here possibly if that's where your interest is so i'm going to go here and say well what if we brought this all the way down to like 0.5 so then you'd have to make you know the chart a lot wider to kind of see that you'd probably want to like again restrict the data to so that you can so that you can expand basically this part of the chart and that's kind of one of the issues with this you know with with these kind of charts when you're kind of trying to focus in on what you want to be focusing in on let's bring it up to let's bring it up to one tab so here's it is that one let's bring it up to two so then you've got this let's bring it up to what did we say three so there it is at three. It was at five before, it looks pretty good. And then we can go the other way and say, what if it was at like seven? So there we're at like seven, let's bring it to five. Let's bring it back to where it is, where it was. So that looks pretty good. And so there's our curve. Now, again, you could kind of uh, do some comparisons of multiple curves too. So you might say uh, that you wanna kind of label this data so you might say if i was gonna go back into my data set and say edit this series the, the name is on 7 14 let's say and say okay we could then add another data set and so let's go back on over to our chart here and say let's say we add down here on 7 13 copy that put that on over here or let's let's pick one that's that's further away and and obviously you can get into analyzing these yield curves and say okay what is this telling us because this one you know is a well let's take one that's all the way up here see the difference from the last one they've got which is uh which is one three which is the one i have i'm going to copy this one and put that right here i'm going to paste it this way this time and then i'm going to take this cell formatting up top paint brush it paint brush it and put it on down there and then i want to add another set of data so i'm going to take this and well let's let's go down here and add another data set i'll do it this way i'll pull this up now and let's say that we're gonna we're gonna go here i want to go to chart designs select data and I'm going to I'm going to add another one. I'm going to add another one. And this is going to be on one I'll call it 13 the x data the x data on the x is going to be the years so that's going to be this data and then the y data is going to be this data. So it's going to be this data. So there we have it. And I'm going to say, okay, and okay. And you can see a substantial kind of difference in what's going on here. I'm going to adjust my axes again. So I'm going to go to this one. And let's go over here. This one goes down to 0.5. So I got to bring it basically back down to zero on the minimum. So there, so there we've got our, our kind of comparison our kind of comparison curves. And again, 
you can look at these curves and try and get into the idea. Well, what if the what if the yield curve is inverting and so on, right? What's that mean for the economy and so on? You know, what are the signs of that? So you can you could try to interpret when people talk about you know the yield curves. You can try to extrapolate and put the yield curves together and then and then make some assumptions based on those curves. But you could graph them out here. Good work to kind of put the graphs together and play with your with your graphings and then interpret that data. Also note that you might put in like a legend here. You might say, okay, I want I need a legend now because I got these two these two items. So here's the 14 and the 13. You can also, you know, choose different designs on your curve possibly you know up top and make it you know more fancy put the legend in a different spot and so on maybe something like that might give us a little bit more room on it and so so you could do so you could do something like that but just a general general concept graphing the yield curve and using our uh, graphing tools to help do so